This episode is all about grass-fed beef and why you may want to reconsider buying it at the grocery store. I recently took a visit to Beaver Brook Ranch to take a closer look. Cue the farm! Hey guys! As soon as I got to Beaver Brook Ranch, I was greeted by the owners, Stefan and Lorena Schoen. All right, got my boots. Here we go, Lorena has her boots. Yep. The first part of farming cows is finding the perfect hilly terrain that allows for water runoff, less puddles, and something we can all get excited about, less mosquitoes. There's a special pasture mix that we use that's made up of clover, which is pretty heavy in protein, oh. timothy, three or four different types of seed that we use based on you know, what the cows need. You know, the, the real key thing is we've set up a rotational program here and it took a couple years now to really get it fine-tuned. There's still some left, but if you kind of look through, there's, they picked it pretty good. So we'll come through, let it grow up. That's the length you want there. Yeah. So the day in the life of a farmer is uh, pretty interesting. I mean, you have so many different tasks every day. You obviously have to make sure that there's water, right? Yeah. And then rotating the cows. Probably once every two or three months, a tree falls on a fence. Oh. So you got to make sure that you find it before the cows find it. Every month we track the weight gain of, and that's sort of how we, real, how we manage everything. We're looking for three to four pounds a day. In the fall they'll gain faster because they're not as hot and they're actually on pasture, they're eating. We're going to see the cows now. The cows at Beaverbrook Ranch are really healthy. In four years, Stefan and Lorena haven't had to use antibiotics, medications, or seek veterinary care for their herd. And the cows seem pretty happy too. When we entered the paddock, they came right up to us to say hi. You got some snot, but you're cute. <laughs> you know, you gotta watch out with grass-fed beef now. Uh, it's become its own industry because it's growing so rapidly. Now it's starting to get commercialized just like the feedlot business. So a large percentage, I think the last statistic was 90 plus percent of grass-fed beef now is being imported it from South America and other countries. What they're able to do is bring them, bring them into the U.S., have them processed in the U.S., and then call them it's made in the U.S. Yeah, so it's crazy. Yeah. So you just really need to. That's why we invite people to come out here, see exactly what's going on, and know where your food's coming from. And I think the more we do that across everything we eat, it's not only good for the local economies, but it's also good for our health. You know. Yeah. What is the difference between grass-fed and grass-finished? Right. This is a new term that we're starting to yeah. see in the market. Tell people what that means. Most. Cows will stay on pasture for, for a while, and then what happens is the last month or two, they'll grain finish them. And so, you know, they'll, they'll still call them pasture raised, grass fed, but you really need to understand that the finish part of it is completely from, from the time they're born all the way to, um, you know, the time you take them to the butcher. There's, they're only fed on grass or hay. Why are they doing? Why are our manufacturers doing that? Is that to get some more fat onto the? Yeah, beef? more fat. So you add more weight if you are in that type of business. You're going to sell it on the live weight. So the more weight you can add on, you know, obviously that's a benefit. And two, you know, once you feed corn and grains, you can pack on a lot of weight. It also packs on fat. This gives us the ability to deliver year round. As your future customer, I'm very grateful for this. Yeah. I'm excited. So this is a standard quarter. A quarter is about 100 pounds of take-home meat. This okay? whole box? All three. All three, oh, yep. okay. So this is uh, a chuck roast. And when people are talking about bone broth yep. and the collagen and the marrow seeping into that broth, are they, they're using cuts with the bone in it, just like this? Yes, your ribeye steak, three pound rump roast. You hear your short ribs? These are the bones you chew on when you're done with them. Yep, rib. yep. There's only a few flat iron steaks in the entire cow. A sirloin tip steak. Here's a strip steak. Here's your beef brisket. About 40% of your order will be ground beef. It's just because anything, anything that can't be made into a steak or roast and the trim is added into the ground beef. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can totally appreciate this type of life. I mean, it's, it just, when you're removed from the city and removed from the commerciality of the suburbs and you see the work that goes into where your food comes from, you just have a new appreciation for it. And it's a lot of work. And so it really makes me want to support these farmers because, I mean, look what they're doing. This is their livelihood. This is their passion. And we get to eat that. I get to enjoy that. So I'm never buying meat anywhere else, that's for sure. And even though I had a blast at Beaverbrook Ranch, it's time to get back to the kitchen. 
and these bones are the only ones I'll use in my bone broth. This is my favorite broth, no bones about it. Here's how you do it. So we're back in the kitchen and I'm going to use some bones from Beaverbrook Ranch to make an easy crock pot bone broth. Now bone broth is all the rage because when you seep those bones in your broth for 18 to 24 hours to really get all the nutrients, you're gonna get all that bone marrow, all that collagen, all the things that really benefit our health into your broth. So here's how you make it. You get some bones from whatever roast or beef that you have. This is oxtail from the farm, so it's gonna have some more meat to it. So the first thing you wanna do when you have your bones is to roast them in the oven just enough to get a nice golden brown color on them. That's gonna increase your flavor profile of your broth. So into the crock pot they go. Don't blink or you might miss this recipe. So simple. And all the good fat goes right in as well. Remember, because these are grass-fed and finished cows, all the nutrition, those omega-3 fatty acids, the vitamin K, the potassium, it's all in that fat. So no need to be scared of that. The next ingredient that goes in is your celery. Just a rough chop because you're gonna strain this out later. Boom. Boom. And then onion. You don't even have to peel the onions, just the one outer layer of skin and leave the rest on. That just adds flavor. In. And then two or three bay leaves. You're gonna cover the whole thing with water and then let that go for 18 to 24 hours. So once your bone broth is done, let it cool and strain it twice. Once through a colander just like this and one through a fine strainer. That's gonna get all those little bits of meat and bone. And you can see the color. This is where all of that nutrition is. And then all you do is you use a funnel and put it into reusable jars. This will last in your refrigerator for about three or four days or it will last in your freezer up to a year. Now I already have two jars that I filled and put in the refrigerator. And you're gonna see the consistency of the bone broth is really gelatinous and thick. Check it out. That's actually the collagen from the bones that is seeped into the broth. So a little note about bone broth. Bone broth is different than regular broth because of the length of time in which you seep those bones. And by doing that, you're getting all the nutrients, all the collagen that really promote a healthy lifestyle and anti-aging properties. You would use it just like you would use any broth. So basically, it's like broth 2.0. So that's an easy bone broth recipe. Again, thanks to Beaver Brook Ranch for having us out on the farm. For more episodes and ways to eat your way to wellness, check out the YouTube channel and eatyourwaytowellness.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. See you guys next time. So steers, they're not able to breed. Steers, but they're males, not they're able males. to breathe because yes. they've been, how you say... Castrated. Right. Yes. Okay. Good. And so we have one bull that's over on the nursery um, that Takes care all of all, yep. the, all the females. Yep. And there you go.